Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So, this is a big day for me. This is my very, very first YouTube video. Not only that, um, it's a special one, because today is what I'm dubbing National iPhone Day, or International iPhone Day. When you're a new YouTuber, the first thing you have to do is to decide what you're going to record your video on. And for me, the timing couldn't be more perfect, because... As of today is the 24th of September 2021, today is the day when the iPhone 13 is released. So for my very first video, I'm going to do an iPhone unboxing video. So let's get into it. So I've been to the Apple store in Southampton and I picked up the iPhone and a couple of accessories. Apologies for the sound, it does sound rather echoey, but unfortunately I am surrounded by monitors and walls and I haven't had a chance yet to uh, to put up a studio or to put any soundproofing in. So apologies for the audio on this one. So anyway, so here we are. Here is the beast indeed. So this time I've decided to go for the big boy. I've decided to go for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Nice boxing. I have to say, with the um, with the Pro Max, it, it does seem that uh, certainly from the people I've spoken to and when I was around today, it does seem that that I've gone for the blue colour, and it does seem that the blue seems to be the most popular colour. So it'll be interesting to see how many of these are about. I did go for the. Um, 512 gig version because the one terabyte version unfortunately was not available at the time and it was going to wait at least a month wait so yes so as i said i've got the fact we've got the iphone we've got a bunch of accessories so without further ado let's do the unboxing so i kind of like it here they've got you think you can see they've got this like little strip here that you can peel off which is quite nice actually so let's do that cool as you can tell it's been a long time since i've done one of these And here we go, look at that, look at that. Oh wow, that is huge. <laughs> My phone is the iPhone XS. So it's quite small in comparison. So let's take the case off and have a look and compare them side by side. So, oh wow, look at this, this is a beast, isn't it, look. Wow, that is, oh look at that, look how shiny that is. I don't know if that picks up on the camera, but that is very, very shiny. Very, very shiny. And I've seen on other unboxing videos this this white this white piece of card on the top, and it's quite nice actually. I don't know if you can make it out, but actually telling you which the buttons are for. So you've got the power on button clearly on the right hand side. You've got the SIM ejection here, where you put in your SIM, and then you've got your volume down, volume up, and then your mute button here. And it says nicely on this card here, and then you've got on the back you've got your three visible cameras here with your flash. So let's do the peel. Very nice, very nice. I have to say it is a lot shinier than I thought it would be. So that's, that's very, very nice. So let's power it on. See how much juice it comes with. It's a pretty full then. Wow, that screen is massive. Oh, I like the way they put China main. I don't know if you can see that. They've actually put China mainland on the top. It's interesting. Yes, unfortunately, China appears to be the only country that does actually get a dual SIM, which is really disappointing, I have to say, for the iPhones, because I'm someone who likes a dual SIM phone. Um, because sometimes it's just nice to have options. It's nice to have more than one, uh, be on one of my, more than one phone network. Let's say, for example, you're in an area where you're out of signal. It's nice to be able to fall back on another 4G SIM or 5G SIM card in, in your phone. Now, I know, yes, they do have eSIMs, which is true. But I have to say, has anyone ever used eSIMs? You seem to have a limited number of providers, and they all seem to be really expensive. So, and we know for a fact that Apple, people can't say that Apple can't fit two SIMs into. Uh, an iPhone because we know that's not true because they do it for China so and if they can do it for China then they can do it for normal models as well so I think that's um, unfortunately that's a misstep on their part I think because I think there are some of us out there that will uh, 
that do like that. So the back this time round is quite matte actually I have to say. It's not quite, it's still got a fingerprint magnet and you can see already, I don't know if you can see that in the light, I can already see uh, mar or either grease marks or slight scuff marks so I'm not sure how well that's going to wear actually. So if you look at the iPhone XS for example, it's glass, yes it's a fingerprint magnet but it is glass and it is very nice actually. So I have to say I'm actually preferring the, the feel in terms of the glass of the XS but at the same time this is a lot because the edges here are a bit, a bit um, less rounded on the iPhone 13 it does feel a lot nicer in the hand if it was a lot nicer to grip you know a lot more sturdy it feels heavier but it feels like uh, I have to say it does feel more quality but at the same time, I did like the glass effect from the previous iPhone XS, uh, well, long previous now. So whilst that's setting up then, let's have a look at what else you get in the box. And, and as we already know, and it's already been covered multiple times, unfortunately there's not much in the box. <laughs> so you've got your cable, USB-C to lightning cable, which is okay for me to be fair because I have so many lightning cables it's nice to know that I can still use them on my new phones so that's good to know uh, and that's it just a little uh, little piece of little you know little card to say you know your sim ejection tool and your as Flossie Carter would say your Apple trolling sticker which is good that they included that actually I can I've already thought of a, of a nefarious place to put that so yes so Face and privacy, face ID, yep. So I put my wife, so the first thing it did was it asked for my Wi-Fi password and now it's asking for my face ID. So let's set that up now. And then after that, it's asking for me to create my passcode. So I have to say, I was expecting it to there we go. So then to restore my apps and data, I can either restore from my iCloud backup, or transfer directly from the phone. Can't imagine that would be very, I'm not sure which one of these would be the quickest in all honesty. It'd be interesting to know, wouldn't it? So let's try from iCloud backup then. Uh, verification code. So on my old iPhone now, it's asking me for it to input the verification code they've just sent to me. Agree to all the gump, and there we go. Setup will take a few minutes to complete. So, whilst that's happening, then let's see what other accessories we, that I've managed to purchase. First thing, of course, the same as everybody the obligatory case so I must say um, so not a disclaimer really but just a bit of information I these are all something these are all things I purchased myself so I have no sponsor no one has sent me anything these are all what I purchased myself so let's have a look then so this is the current iPhone iPhone 13 Pro Max case just a standard silicon one to be honest they are lovely cases uh, in the past I've used them the one thing I will say is in my opinion they are quite overpriced um, with Apple and not only that I don't find they're very durable in particular um, I found that when you if you remove them from your phone occasionally you know they don't always have a good wear and tear so let's have a look so yeah lovely feel it has a nice silicon feel to it as I said before I mean so yeah let's peel that off nice thing nice interior here and you can see the MagSafe here that's one of the reasons I think I was keen to get one of these new cases as well is the MagSafe features but um, Yes, the th so the problem I've had is particularly here, this point here, I always find that if you if you t put it on, and if you put the case on and off your iPhone quite frequently, this bit on the previous cases tends to crack. So I'm hoping this one will be slightly better. So let's have a look what the phone looks like with it put on. There we go. I have to say this phone is rather a beast. But I have to say, it is so far, because the phone's larger and the keyboard's larger, I do find this very, very nice to type on. But then, as you can see, I have got rather large hands. So, aha. Uh -huh. There we go. So, finally, <laughs> it is restoring from iCloud. Estimated time remaining, I'm sure, about 18 hours, but never mind, especially my Wi Fi connection. But there we go. So let's get into the other accessories then. So there we go. That's that. Nothing else there. 
whatever that is, who cares. So speaking of which, so cards and keeping things in, in check in your life and your wallet. What happens like just now when I lost my cards? Well, what can you do but get the latest leather wallet for MagSafe? Now I did check in the shop and they did assure me that it is software based that this wallet will now, when it's dropped off the phone, that it will send a message to your phone to say that you've dropped it and then you can find it again. And there's various demonstrations on YouTube if you want to go and have a look where people have deliberately lost, dropped the wallet, give it to someone and then they've been able to find it. it works on the same principle as the air tags do and it, so it sends a signal out every so often and it, what it does is it sort of tags onto the nearest iPhone so uh, you know cause when it's in transit or whatever and it uses their own network to fire off so I think generally speaking to save battery they don't last, they don't do it that quickly. I think it's every 15 minutes by default but I'm having to destroy the box just to get it out. Ah, oh, I don't care anymore. It's just... Wow. <laughs> they really do put this together well, that's all I can say. Because I'm having to rip the whole thing apart just to get at it. <laughs> Not the best unboxing experience, but there you go. So, push it up. Ah, there we go. And then the whole idea is obviously you put your card in and then you... Slot it on the back of the phone. Oh look. Keep saying hello. There we go. And then it slots on nicely. Now I wasn't sure what colours to go with. It came with various colours. I believe it was like black, white, and I think there were there was a horrible leather brown colour that I didn't like. But I thought the blue was probably the best thing to go with this. But as you can see, it, it, it it's not quite it's not the nicest in con contrast to the blue case I've got. But uh, at the same time, I think with a dark blue case it would look better. But yeah, it still looks good. It's not too bad actually. It doesn't bulk it out too much. The thing is, I always wondered why you need it because if you're going to be using if you're going to be using things like contactless on the phone itself, you know, using Apple Pay, the question is why would you need this card wallet? And well, the, the one example I can think of is your driver's license, because these days, or you know, we, certainly within the UK, you know, you've got your driver's license. You've also got um, you've also got a little COVID certificate you can put in there as well. So, for example, you know, proof positive that you've been vaccinated and whatnot if you're going to somewhere, nightclub, bar, whatever. Yeah, good. So yeah, I think that's, that's not bad, is it? It's compatible with the iPhone 12 as well. And you can make some little noise when it clips on. But yeah, very nice. So, what next? So next up we have AirTags. One of the good perks for having this phone, I felt, and even with the 12, is having use of AirTags. Um, I mean, certain things like Tile have been doing GPS tags for quite a long time now, but the thing I like about AirTags is the fact that they last for a year, and that's not to be sniffed at. That's pretty good battery life. The only downside is, of course, as I said, the same with this wallet as well. You know, it has to be near an iPhone in order to give off a signal in order to upload where it is. But I'd argue it's still a very, very neat solution. So. Yeah, let's give a, and they're quite expensive for £25 for one, but that's in price with all the competitors. So, you know, and I thought, I just thought, I thought, you know, it makes sense to buy four, you know, as your value for money and all that. Not sure if that makes it easier to open that or not. Nope. So, two seconds, let's get the unboxing knife. So, Stanley, the unboxing knife. Ah. No. <laughs> Easy pull out, I go through it the hard way. Typical me. So, let's have a look. So, paperwork warranties etc even if it was an instruction manual I'm a man I probably won't read it box nothing else in it no so what do we have here here we go and here are the tags very nice so I think I need to pair these with the phone obviously but there's not a lot I can do when it's restoring from iCloud so unfortunately oh 14 minutes that's not too bad so hopefully we'll be able to set those up in a little while. 
And finally, the last thing we have on the accessory list, battery case, or battery pack in this case. So in the past, I used to do a battery case. In fact, I think I have the old battery case laying around somewhere. Yes, so in the past, I used to have the battery case. This is the case for the iPhone XS. So it's very similar, isn't it? It's just a standard uh, silicon case, like you get like this. But the only difference is it's got the extra battery in it. Well, nowadays, you don't need that anymore. And yeah, it was nice, it was okay. You had to pull it like that and then slide the iPhone in. So this is on the XS. Pull it down, slide it in. And away you go, extra battery life. And then you'd have to move on to the swipe left. And then you see here your battery here, battery level. Unfortunately, I have to say this, I've had this now for uh, approximately two years and it worked okay to begin with, but I have to say now it just drains so quickly, the battery case I mean. Like from full charge, if I don't use it for like probably five days, it's drained. Also, clearly, this battery is not not working anymore, clearly. Um, but anyway, so this is the smart battery case. So MagSafe, of course. Tiny little green arrow. Don't even see that. Pull. And then I presume, much like the other one, we need to introduce Mr. Stanley. No, that's probably done more damage than good. Oh dear, oh dear. Looks like I can see I'm gonna be ripping this one open as well. Oh no, there we go, that's nice easy to do. There we go. So I'm kind of, oh wow, that's really a lot heavier than I was expecting. Wow, that's smooth, smooth very, very smooth in texture here. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, wasn't many options in terms of the colours, I don't believe, for the battery case. So white's okay. Oh, the battery, sorry. White's okay. It's fairly neutral, isn't it? So let's see what happens. Max Aif. What can you say? So yeah, that's pretty strong look. I mean, I'm really, really, really having to push that in order to get it off. So pretty good. 76% charge straight out of the box. Very nice, very nice. So yes, you see this here. So that shows you that the MagSafe is on 0%. That's actually very bad because what that means is, um, and there's always a, a point of contention in terms of batteries and how you should treat battery care. But I've spoken to many, many, many people who uh, have very different opinions on, on, on batteries. So the best, the best people to ask are the manufacturers, not the people who use the phones or use the batteries from day to day. Yes, so this is extremely bad. This is it's a bad news. So if ever you receive any, any item and it's on 0%, and the battery is on 0% charge, my advice, send it back. Um, most batteries, especially lithium ion batteries, require uh, a certain amount of charge to be in. Otherwise, um, there's a little chip inside each battery and that chip registers whether the battery level is at zero or that battery registers which is zero or 100%. And what happens is if, for example, the, the item hasn't been charged for a long, long time and it's drained, then it often loses its um, memory. So when you charge it, it doesn't actually charge back to 100%. It actually only charges back to say 60% and it incorrectly reports that it's at 100%. And that's why the battery drains really, really, really quickly. So it's important that whenever you get a device, if it has no power, you should really send it back. And I've had an examples of this. For example, I bought um, in 2019, I bought a Hybe R5, which is a digital audio player, and that came with no power at all. Now I charged it and I used it for a little while and it worked great for a little while. And what happened is within less than six months, the device itself, the battery just doesn't hold any charge anymore. So for example, if I take the device, fully charge it and then leave it on my desk within less than a day, it's completely down to 0% because the battery discharges all the time and does not hold its charge at all. So I have to say that's extremely disappointing with the, uh, with the battery pack. And I would think, and I could be wrong, we're gonna test it, I think that 
after a day or so, if it doesn't hold a charge, I'm definitely gonna send it back because that's what I was trying to say is happening with this case here now. This battery case does not unfortunately hold its charge. And it is down to um, the fact that it, it, it just constantly discharges. So it just doesn't retain it. And if it's the same with any electronic device that requires um, regular charges for lithium ion batteries, for example, if you put it on the side and leave it and don't use it for three years, then what happens is the battery will discharge and eventually it just, it just charges to the bottom. And because that chip that retains the memory then doesn't know, for example, it loses its memory because it's got no power to keep it alive, so to speak. Whenever you then charge it and try and use it again normally, you'll find that the battery just char discharges really 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 quickly um, now people may refute this but I'll tell you what um, on devices that I have had that have, you know that I have had that for example my iPhone itself the actual iPhone XS still is perfect it my, my iPhone still holds its I still get a full day's charge out of it it's three years old I have no problems with battery life at all on it um, it's not quite as good as it was when I first got it but at the same time, it is still excellent, I have to say. And that's because I make sure that I keep all of my gadgets on charge. I never let it drop ideally below 40%. And if I do, it's fine. If, it do, if you do occasionally, that's okay. As long as the device is on and you never, ever, ever switch it off, and the moment you can get to a charger, even if it's at 10%, it doesn't matter. At the moment you can get to a charger, definitely put that on charge. So anyway, so that's it for my iPhone 13 unboxing uh, i hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time see you in the future youtube